It is our joy again to have Pastor and Randy uh, and Cheryl come on up if you guys want. Uh, come up and share with us. In, in the winters, they're going to tell you what they do, but I'm going to kind of give you a little head start as they get up here. Uh, for the last number of years, they have been working down in Orlando at Wycliffe Associates, just doing some neat things, helping connect people who do the work at Wycliffe. And so they're going to talk, I'm sure, about the work that they do and tell you all about that. But uh, they live here in the summer months, and then they abandon us for warmer lambs, and we understand why. But uh, we are glad that they're able to come and share. And as I said, if you don't know Pastor Randy and Cheryl, Pastor Randy was pastor here for almost three decades. And so we owe uh, a great, great deal to him and are thankful that they are willing to come and share with us once again. So with that, Pastor Randy, Cheryl, the floor is yours. Mike, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, pastor Chris, we... Uh, we're with you last Sunday for the baptismal service down in Mille Lacs, and that was a great day. And so we, we praise the Lord with you. And I uh, want to thank Pastor Chris and the leadership of the church for allowing us to come and share about the, the ministry and the exciting things that are happening in uh, Bible translation today. You know, uh, we are very fortunate to have God's Word in printed form. Um, <coughs> If you didn't have the Bible, what would you know about God? Well, of course, we'd know uh, from the creation that he is a creator and he has uh, placed within our hearts uh, a knowledge of him that we can respond to. But we would be so poor without the word of God. Um, the word of God is not just another book. It's a very unique book. Uh, there were about 40 men over a period of about 1500 years that uh, wrote down what the Lord told them. And uh, we have that. In, in a form that we can read. Uh, the Bible talks about this process. In Second Peter 1, 20 and 21, it says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In Second Timothy 3, 14 and following, it says, But as for you... Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the men of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, you, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. And then in Romans 15.4, it says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Uh, the Bible is a great tool for us to learn of God and to grow in our faith. But there are many in our world that do not have the Bible uh, in a printed form or in a form that they can understand. And that's what we're going to talk with you about today. Now, uh, most of you have probably heard of Wycliffe Bible Translators. Um, we have supported here Carl and Kristen who uh, work with uh, Wycliffe Bible Translators uh, over in the Southeast Asia. And uh, they are on the campus uh, down in Orlando, Florida. The suburb is actually Lake Nona. And, uh, but also another organization that comes alongside them is Wycliffe Associates. And uh, these are two different organizations, but we worked, work together. And many of our, our volunteers are there on the with Wycliffe Bible Translators helping in a variety of ways on the campus as well as in in the offices and uh, so and we have about 150 volunteers uh, January through March uh, some come and go but it's it's pretty pretty exciting the work that the Lord is doing down there uh, Cheryl and I got involved with Wycliffe Associates uh, I suppose largely because of Gloria and Sonny Carlson, who, uh, of course, were, um, they were down there volunteering with Wycliffe Associates for a number of years, 
And we were down in Florida one year and uh, we saw them and they showed us the campus and Sonny said, you know, Randy, when you uh, leave Glory, when you retire, you should volunteer with Wycliffe Associates. So that kind of planted a seed in our mind. And then there was uh, the winter of 2014 and uh, that planted another seed in our minds. <laughs> this is really bad up here. So um, we decided to, to try it out and uh, see what it was, was like. And uh, so um, we got involved with Wycliffe uh, Associates. Um, this will be uh, our, we've had a fourth winter. Now this will be our fifth winter actually down there uh, when we leave in the end of October. And uh, that first year, we went down to Texas for a few weeks, and we did volunteer at the campus down there in Dallas for a week. Uh, I was in maintenance, and... I helped in the boutique. They had a, have a beautiful boutique. If a missionary comes home and needs to outfit anything, they have clothing and house, housewares and books and toys and everything. So we, it, I, we were there right at the beginning of January, and people had dropped off... Um, items over the Christmas break and so we had boxes and boxes and boxes of things to go through and and organize and set up and all that so that's what we did while we were while I was down there I helped in the boutique and then we went uh, to Florida for six weeks uh, with Wycliffe Associates and uh, they have a program called Orlando Exchange which is English immersion we'll talk about that a little bit later and so that was our first winter then the second winter we went down for three months we were involved in a, a six-week project there called Translation Questions, uh, getting a, a question out of each, each two or three verses in the Old Testament. There were 1,500 chapters left to go, and they needed it by the, fir by the middle of February. And so um, you, you have a question you develop out of that passage, and then the answer comes right out of that passage, and that's the first uh, step in checking the quality of a, a translation. And then we did another interesting project, which was revise every version. And we, there were three different groups that worked with, uh, we took the 1560 Geneva Bible, uh, which is in Old English, and we revised that to contemporary language. Um, our group of five worked on Romans, another group worked on Galatians, Ephesians, and another group worked on um, the book of Mark. And uh, the educational director, was as interested in the in the product, uh, the process as well as the the product, and the the process we went through was actually used that spring with oral translation in India and uh, with in China as well. But one of us would read the verse in in uh, Old English. That was me. <laughs> then a second person would try to uh, put that into contemporary language. Uh, a third person would get it on the computer, a fourth would look to see that all the key terms were covered, and then a fifth would uh, help in, we'd try to get that verse as, as best we could in contemporary English. And we go through the whole chapter, and then we go back over it a couple of times, and it was, it was quite a process, but it was very, very interesting. Um, in, uh, we've also involved in oral recording. Did you know that there are hundreds and hundreds of languages in the world that are just oral. There's no written alphabet. And so uh, you need to make uh, an oral recording and uh, the people that are uh, technologically adapted down there at Wycliffe Associates had uh, developed a program called Translation Recorder and they uh, used an iPad and you could record a, from the English source text onto that iPad and then uh, a national translator of a language could just take that, that iPad and he could use that to get it into uh, another language and uh, if he's bilingual. And so um, I, I, I uh, put um, Matthew and Luke, the books of Luke, on, on the uh, iPad. Of course they like his voice. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, then uh, this past couple of years, I've been chaplain for the winter volunteers, and uh, also last year was site volunteer coordinator, which I will do again. And then uh, two years ago, I was the um, 
orientation and the hostess. So when people would come in, I would orientate them and let, tell them uh, what changes had happened in the previous year with Wycliffe Associates and, and, and just welcome them in and help, if they had any questions, they would, I'd be the go-to person. Well, then last year I did that as well as being the ministry placement person. So I had to find jobs for about 150 people last year. A lot of them that come back, uh, they go to the same job, which helped me out a lot. But then there were new people that had come in. I had to figure out what, where, what are your skills and what would you like to do and where does it fit in in the scheme of things. And there was one gal that we tried three different things. We tried the first thing. She goes, I just can't do this. I, I, I think it was the what language? Farsi. The Farsi language. Uh, I couldn't even understand it. So she tried that. No, I can't do that. Then we tried another thing. She came back and said, I can't do that either. So I was scratching my head, wondering, wondering what we could do. Well, we got her into the sale program, and we'll talk about that later, and she just loved it. It's like, this is where I'm supposed to be. So, of course, there was a lot of prayer that went into all of that as well. So, try, you know, praying the people into the right position, and, and generally it all worked. I didn't have anybody else who didn't like their job, I don't think. So, anyway... <laughs> That, that was what I, so I do that as well as hostessing and orientation. This year I'm going to have a helper, Peggy Anderson. Some of you are related to her. She's going to be my assistant, so that will help me out a lot when it comes to orientation and welcoming people. We'd like you to watch a short video on, about uh, Wycliffe Associates and the work that they do. is the absence of light. Without light, we're blind and we stumble along the path. It brings uncertainty and fear, and darkness will always follow a fallen man unless the Son of God illuminates their path with understanding. But as Scripture warns us, people are perishing for lack of knowledge. While there's evidence of a creator and creation itself, and his invisible qualities are clearly seen. The enemy keeps them in darkness. They exchange the truth of God for lies, for evidence. They don't know because they don't understand. They don't understand because no one has told them. Or they don't have the truth of God's word in their own heart language. This is so vitally important. Language is part of our very being. It's part of our identity. It connects us with other people. It makes sense of our experiences in the world around us. It's a means of communicating values, traditions, beliefs, and customs. But when we can't understand what's being said, we're confused and lost. The best hope for anyone to come to a saving knowledge of Christ, to hear the story of forgiveness, the message of hope, is through God's Word. We've seen it with our own eyes. As believers, we know that it's an incredible lamp unto our feet. And when we witness the Holy Spirit using the Word to change people's hearts and minds and lives, it gives us strength to press on for his kingdom. I believe it's only through God's word that their eyes are open and they can find freedom. True freedom from sin, fear, despair, and hopelessness. Wycliffe Associates is committed to helping people find that freedom by hearing the truth of the scriptures in their own language. But there are barriers to translating God's word into every heart. From dangerous travel conditions to desperately needed resources. There are training, technology, and communication tools that are needed by believers for proper translation. Yet, God has a solution. Wycliffe Associates is striving to achieve the goal of having a Bible in every language by 2025. We call that Vision 2025. At Wycliffe Associates, we accelerate the work of Bible translation by empowering national Bible translators to provide God's Word in their own language. We partner with the local church to guide and guard that translation, and then we engage people from all around the world to provide resources 
to provide technology, training, and especially support for Bible translation. Yes, it's a monumental task, but we see God's mighty hand at work. We've seen solar-powered internet open up lines of communication, biblical materials smuggled into dangerous areas on flash drives, new translation strategies that globally increase access to scripture. And now through our mobilized assistance supporting translation program, known as MAST, God is enabling collaborative groups of trained nationals to translate the Bible faster than any other time or strategy in human history. What once took years can now be done in months. Wycliffe Associates has conducted hundreds of mass workshops with hundreds more planned. This is why we desperately rely on God's people. Because it isn't easy. We can't do this alone. People are perishing. The forces of evil are continuously at work in trying to hinder the spread of the gospel. The enemy tries to discourage us, tries to defeat us. For some, the work of Bible translation puts their lives at risk, but they're actually happy to do it. Why? Because they see the impact, the internal impact, that comes from hearing God's Word, putting their faith in Christ, and being called a child of God. I want you to know, for us who are involved in this work, we are so encouraged because of your prayer and your support. We know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because He is with us, and so are you. So as we've embraced the call to go forth into all the world and make disciples, we look forward to rejoicing with you as the scriptures are translated into new languages and we are speaking God's word into every heart. What once was blind, now sees. And what was once lost, is now found. You have a handout in your bulletin about uh, with some blanks, and if you want to follow along and fill that out, that'll help you um, as you so as you pray for Wycliffe Associates. You can look at all all the um, interesting facts about it. So, what is the status of translation work of the Bible today? Um, there are over seven thousand languages in the world. Amazing that there's that many different languages in the world. Of these languages, uh, about 636 have the complete Bible. So we praise the Lord for that. That's because of the, the translation efforts that have gone forth in recent decades by several different groups and through the prayers of God's people. Uh, there's about 3,700 in progress right now. And uh, um, about 1,500 have the New Testament. And then there's about 11, 1,200 that have some scripture. And then there's about 11, 1,200 that at least they've started um, translation of the scriptures. Um, how many of you here have a Bible in your home? How many of you have had three, four, five Bibles in your home? We are blessed, but almost 40% of the language groups in our world don't have one word of the Bible in their heart language. Yes, many of them know a trade language or what we call a gateway language, whether it be Spanish in South America or Swahili in Africa, but they don't know, uh, their, the Bible isn't in their heart language. And what's it like, Cheryl, to have the, the Bible not in your language, just to know it through a trade language. They say it's like um, eating a banana with the skin on. <laughs> Sounds good, huh? <laughs> so that is the, the challenge to uh, find a way to get the Bible translated in the languages left to be translated. It was back in uh, about three and a half years ago uh, four years ago that our educational director, Dan Kramer, was in Nepal and he had developed a program for English immersion, helping the national translators learn English because a lot of them have to report in English, they need to look at commentaries in English and so forth. And so they were in the country of Nepal and uh, one of the national Christians there said, 
you know, you have developed this great uh, six-week curriculum on English immersion. Uh, can't you help us get the Bible in our language? We've asked different translation groups to help us. And they all say, you're too small. You know, there's only 80,000 of you, or there's only 150,000 of you. So we can. And we've been turned down uh, for decades. Can't you do something? And so Dan Kramer, he went to work. He has a master's in education. And he developed a, a uh, methodology called uh, MAST, Mobilized Assistance Supporting Translation. And... Uh, it uh, is a way to accelerate Bible translation. It's based on the way people learn. Um, and you can get uh, the scriptures to those who want it, even in these smaller groups. Uh, and it enables the national translators to uh, produce the translation of the scriptures. And it only takes weeks or months to do it. And uh, that is the the work, main work now of Wycliffe Associates, um, working with the national translators at their request. We've had uh, hundreds and hundreds of these language groups that have been bypassed in, in Bible translation uh, come to us and say, can you help us get the Bible in our language? And so we are responding to their request. And it's amazing uh, what is taking place. Um, now the mass uh, methodology consists of several steps several steps of drafting the uh, a text and then several steps in checking to ensure the the naturalness and accuracy of the of the translation um, and these are the eight steps of mass uh, first step is consuming read or listen to the text to uh, to be translated that day and they might listen to it two or three times and then a verse at a time. Retell the passage to a partner. Okay, uh, verbalize it. And then chunking. Divide text into small pieces that you can remember without looking. That is hard, by the way. And that can be one verse. It could be two or three verses, kind of a, a thought. Without and, looking at the, at the t source... Rewrite the text in the target language. And this is the blind draft, and that's what uh, we did with that revising Romans. Mm -hmm. And I often did that, and it's, it's difficult to, to hear that and try to put it in contemporary language, or to hear it and then get it into another language. And those are the uh, drafting steps, and then there's the checking steps, uh, self-editing. Compare the draft with the source and make any, con any corrections that are needed. Yeah, did I do it right? And uh, then peer editing. With a, uh, have a partner compare the draft with the source and make any corrections that are needed. And then key terms checking. Verify the words and terms and make sure that they are, um, and you didn't leave out any, any um, words. And They're translated consistently. And then uh, verse by verse checking. Yeah, have a partner check, a look at that, um, and make sure that it's uh, an absolute correct check of the passage. And uh, our president, uh, Dr. Bruce Smith, has uh, just amazed at the, uh, the way that this has uh, been accepted. And it was just started as an experiment to see, is this really going to work? And uh, it's been amazing. The Lord has, has truly blessed that in the last uh, three and a half years. Well, uh, what is the GL? That's a gateway language. It's a language of wider communication. Uh, it's a trade language, like I said, Spanish or Swahili. Uh, and language barriers are, are a very big obstacle in Bible translation. But most people, uh, if they have a... Uh, tribal language or what we call a heart language they they often know this uh, gateway language this language of wider communication and even though there's over 7,000 languages in the world uh, there's just a handful of languages of wider communication um, at Wycliffe Associates we believe that there are 39 uh, gateway languages and uh, it's exciting that by the end of this year we believe that we can have the Bible translated in all 39 gateway languages. 
And so then it's just one more step to have it translated into the tribal language uh, in any of these that have been left out. Well, here's how the gateway language works. You have the English uh, content, and uh, that's even challenging because we, we can't use any contemporary uh, translation of the Bible as an English source text because they're all copyrighted. And uh, they're copyrighted, so we can't use them. Um, that's, uh, so they have to go back to a, a translation of the Bible from the original language where the copyright has expired, and then they have revised that into contemporary language. And they have the unlocked literal Bible, more of a, a literal translation. They have the unlocked dynamic Bible that they use as the English source text. And uh, that is translated from the English source text into the gateway language. Um, they've also developed 50 Bible stories. And often when they work in a language, they'll translate the 50 Bible stories, and so the people will have those 50 Bible stories in their language. And then they have utilized people uh, all over the, the world, actually, many volunteers in the United States that have Bible training to uh, make some translation notes that they can access through uh, the solar generation. And then these are the open licensed Bible translations. And even though Wycliffe Associates has developed these, they are not going to copyright them. <laughs> they are going to always be open for any language group to use. Well, there's many benefits of the gateway language. First of all, they, they support the mission, uh, vision of Wycliffe Associates. And our, our mission is involving people in the advancement of Bible translation. And we have a lot of volunteers, as you'll see helping in some way. And then our vision is to have the Bible in every language by 2025. Sounds incredible, impossible, but uh, the way things are moving, it's very possible with the Lord's help. Well, POD, this is called print on demand. And this is a, a printing system that you could fit into a suitcase. And it is taken to the field or sent to the field. And uh, there's great benefits. You can have a quick turnaround instead of a translation and you send it off to a place like South Korea and it comes back six or eight months later, you can print it right there and uh, send it back into the village. There's a lower cost to it um, and a very small footprint. You have a suitcase, you can hide that if it's a, a country where there's uh, great uh, risk in translation of the Bible. And you can, you can print up 20 copies, 50 copies. Uh, you don't have to print up 50,000 copies of whatever you're printing. And so it's exciting what is happening there. And our technological advances are what making this possible. We have the VTACs. This is the hardware that is set up so you can get solar generation anywhere in the world. So when they have these uh, two-week uh, mass workshops, they can access the, the internet. And then you have the BTAX, that's the software that makes it possible. And the national translators get iPads and uh, they can access all the translation notes. They can access the various translations that have been done and they can have it all there. And our facilitators go over and help them learn how to, to use the, the iPads and how to work, work with the, the materials and training them in the mass system. And it's exciting now, like over in the Philippines, uh, we don't even need to send facilitators over there. They have got it down so well they're doing their own, plus they're going into Southeast Asia to help in other countries with other language groups. And so this is the uh, snowball effect of what is taking place. How many of you have been to a Wycliffe Associate Banquet? There's a few of you. Uh, every about 18 months they, they come to Brainerd and they'll probably be here next April as we, we are thinking it through. And there's ways that you can volunteer to help with a banquet like that. And you'll hear the stories of, of Bible translation and what is happening 
in, in our world. Um, they uh, help raise funds, but also the, the knowledge of what is taking place. And they've been going on since 1968. Uh, in all 50 states now. Right, all 50 states. And you can help coordinate the attendees, just promote it in your, your church and community that it's going on. Uh, there's a nice meal, you hear a report, and it's, it's very exciting. We've been to, I think, three of them. Um, you can uh, email the information to different people. They need people to be on board, even regionally, to speak, to travel with the banquet system. Uh, to help set up ahead of time. Well, I mentioned Orlando Exchange before. And uh, what is Orlando Exchange, Cheryl? It's an English immersion program that national translators come to Orlando and learn all about English, but they don't sit in a room and learn how to diagram sentences, no. They take them out and they immerse them in the English language in whatever situation they, they can be in. And it's, it's a lot of fun, and it, we, they can only speak English, even with each other, so it's very interesting to hear them at first, but the progress they make is wonderful. They do a great job with this program. Uh, they take them on field trips, uh, different cultural experiences. Um, they take them on what's called rotations, and uh, it, they have to explain different processes, or they have to read some in, in English, uh, just a variety of things, and just in small groups, and they go from classroom to classroom. Um, uh, one of mine was I had four people that would come at a time and I'd have they'd have to tell me how to tie a shoe and I had a shoe there and uh, It's funny some of the things that they say and get into and and uh, They say cross cross. Okay, what now? And one guy said rabbit ear rabbit ear <laughs> Make the loop, you know, uh, they have to do a lot of presentations individually and as uh, groups of two or three so they have to talk with people of, from a different language, but all in English. And we've done that. We've been involved in this two or three times. Um, this last year, they began the WAVE program, which is an in-depth training program to equip volunteers for service in all ministries of Wycliffe Associates. And so it's, it's training, uh, intense training to understand the programs and then hopefully it will be able to help out in those programs in some way. And these are some of the programs, the uh, classes that they have. Uh, we just mentioned SAIL a little bit. SAIL is Sensory Adaptive Immersion, immersion literacy. literacy. And there's a lot of um, 600,000 deaf blind people in the world. I didn't know that until I went down last year, but they're trying to reach the deaf blind, the deaf and the deaf blind, and so the sale program is um, the way that they're doing it, and it's just exploding around the world, and so they've gone on several workshops, um, and then they have what they call SUN, which is a, a um, it's so universal, is, yeah. Yeah, so universal notation. Um, and we have some cards out there on our table. We'll show you that later. You can see how instead of you know, using Braille, they had to come up with their own method of teaching um, blind people to read. And so they've used this uh, universal notation cards. And uh, it's just, they're just growing. It's growing by leaps and bounds. And, and uh, we helped help last year through our auction. We helped with a $5,000 printer that prints these cards by, um, by this hu on a huge sheet of paper, uh, a plastic. And it's, it's a 3D, uh, 3D printer that really works for the, for the deaf people to learn, learn the language. And the, it's also used with the deaf illiterate because in almost all countries in our world, they don't think the deaf illiterate can uh, learn. Right. So they're just kind of warehoused. They just uh, keep them at home in a room and they feed them and that's about it. And the only communication they have is with their caregiver. And so they don't know uh, a sign language. It's only sign, home sign they call it because they can communicate with their caregiver. And, but we didn't know there are over 400 sign languages in the world. Right. Right. Different sign languages. Not just American sign language. But no. uh, it's exciting what is taking place in this program, and that's one of the cutting, cutting edges. Um, so what progress has been made with Wycliffe Associates uh, in this past three and a half years? Well, we're, we've been, we're working in 92 countries now, and uh, the MASS project has, has started uh, uh, over 1,200 language starts. Uh, with groups that didn't have the Bible before and uh, were bypassed. So this is exciting. And uh, 
In Wycliffe Associates, there's over 7,400 volunteers and staff um, worldwide. And so it, it's uh, really great. We always can use more volunteers. Uh, the BTAX, the, uh, the hard drive, they've been 549 installed. Uh, the software in 288 different places. Uh, the iPads, uh, the tablets distributed, almost 4,000. And these are the resources that they need, the national translators need to be able to do their work. And uh, we have uh, 65 iPods, the systems that have been, the POD systems that have been uh, deployed. And uh, Wycliffe Associates had in originally did a lot of work in helping to build Bible translation facilities and, or to remodel by Bible translation facilities around the world. And uh, they, they did that for years and years. Well, where, where could you fit into the WA picture? Well, uh, there are ways to serve. One is uh, to facilitate a mass workshop. And uh, the, uh, there was a lady in a class I taught down in, in uh, Orlando that she d just knew English and she volunteered and she was willing to go um, on a mass workshop and she, uh, she'd been to five now and uh, does a great, great job. It's just amazing. They, they train you and, uh, on what to do. Um, we're getting back up there. Back up to speed. We're almost finished. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, another way is teaching a wave course or taking a wave course. This fall, there's going to be some wave courses online. Mm -hmm. And so you could even take them up here online. No cost. Just uh, learning more about the programs. Um, you can assist with WA banquets. That would be a, a great opportunity. Just recruiting uh, people in the church community. Uh, consulting if a person has a business background, that's real helpful in, in consulting. And prayer. Uh, just the different workshops, the, the dangers that the facilitators get involved in the national translators. Uh, prayer is so essential. Mention that. So Bible, the... No, no, this. Oh, yeah, the, the, there's a couple of uh, these out there. There's languages that don't have any, any uh, Bible or anything in their language. And we would ask that you would take one of these and pray for that language. And then send, give us your email address as well. And then we'll get, uh, they'll uh, set, get you the progress of what's happening as this language, as the Bible is translated into these certain languages. So there's a couple left. So we'd like the, you to uh, take them. The financial giving, of course, is so, so crucial to get these resources to the national translators. And one of the things that's amazing is the stamp ministry that we have down there. We have ladies that come down and view uh, from different, they send stamps from different churches or different places and stamp collections or whatever, postage stamps, canceled or not. And they will um, sit and cut them and clip them. And then there's one lady who takes care of them and sells them on eBay. And every season, like January through March, they make about $10,000 selling stamps on eBay. So it's, uh, you know, you think, oh, I just get rid of my stamps, throw them away, keep them, save them, and we'll be glad to take them down and they'll hopefully make some money off of them. Contemporary stamps, old stamps. Doesn't matter. Um, doesn't make any difference. Cancel stamps, new stamps. If you have some, can save them. Uh, we'll take them down. And it's amazing what is taking place there. And just uh, ways to serve in, uh, down in Orlando. Like I said, we have uh, 150 or so volunteers. And uh, so if uh, you're interested in coming down for a couple of weeks just to try it out, why that is a possibility some some winter season i'll put you to work yeah uh so qualifications for volunteers well you have to be a bible believing christian who believes in the wickliffe associate statement of faith and it's basically a evangelical statement of faith and then interview with the the team before beginning work and the like i said the the statement of faith is uh just your your basic one and there's some needs that are very high priority right now. If you know uh, two, three languages, uh, they can always put you to work. If you're, you're bilingual in English and a, a gateway language, uh, if you're willing to go overseas um, and be involved in a mass workshop, 
or just working remotely. In fact, we work remotely some here in the summertime uh, with Wycliffe Associates. Some days it's uh, non-existent, some days it's an hour or two. Um, and uh, being willing to contribute. Just Google Wycliffe Associates and click on giving opportunities and it's there. So we want to see if you can see yourself in the WA picture, um, helping out with the exciting developments in Bible translation. And uh, we are all looking forward to a day when we can see not only people from glory and from the United States at the, before the throne of God, but we can see people from all nations. Revelation. Revelation 7-9 is Wycliffe Associates' key verse. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. From every nation, tribe, and every language. We're looking forward to that day, and I trust you are too. We have some items out there on the table, and we'd be glad to talk to you after the service. Thank you.